All right. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, welcome to the session, Interactive Lightning Components Using the Reports and Dashboards API. I'm not Natalie Portman, just in case you're confused. I think she's presenting somewhere else. But I think I have something just as interesting to say. So stay tuned, everyone. My name is Sean Cuevo. I've been doing uh, software development for about six years now. I originally cut my teeth on development doing Ruby on Rails and then somehow stumbled upon Salesforce development and been doing that ever since. I feel like that's a common theme. No one starts out as a Salesforce developer. You kind of just end up there. And it's been great. <laughs> I've been doing consulting. Uh, I, I worked in some, uh, for an ISV and did some app, app development and then moved into the industry side. So it's given me exposure to a bunch of different industries and a bunch of different languages from Salesforce to JavaScript and Golang and Python. And it's been a great journey. Currently, I am the senior Salesforce developer at a small startup in Denver called Guild Education. Uh, Guild is redefining higher education and the future of work for 64 million Americans. Our students' first approach is helping millions of working adults advance their careers to education. And Salesforce plays a large role in how we reach our goals. If anyone wants to talk about Guild, or I guess anything in general, feel free to catch me after the session. And so let's go over the agenda today. First, we're going to talk about the troubles with navigating and working with uh, aggregates of data. Then we're going to talk about what options we have out of the box. And then we're going to discuss a thing called configuration-driven development. Then we're going to jump into a demo, and we have some code samples to get your feet wet. Uh, some people were wondering if they're going to be able to access these slides later. I'll post them in the chatter post um, in, it, that's in the agenda builder, so you can reach them there. And also, you can just always find me at sean at guildeducation.com. All right, so data can be very hard to navigate. We have aggregate views of data with, that tells us what we should work on, and then we have our detail pages so that we can actually work on them. A common flow that I see with our users is they open up a list view in one tab, they open up each detail page in another tab, and then they go back and forth in the tabs. Like, right, what should I work on next from the list view? Go to the detail page, do whatever work they need to, close that tab, back into the list view. I've also seen people use multiple list views, so like not, not just switching between those views, but also other tabs with other views. And it works, right? I mean, a lot of people have these list views, but they work in it. And Lightning actually makes this a little better because you're able to um, view both a list view and a detail page at the same time. Uh, we are still on Salesforce Classic, but it's still a little clunky. And we should consider every click as bad, and every page load that your users have to go through is even worse. When it comes to developing user experience, every time they have to do either, click on something or load a page, just slap yourself in the face so that you understand how they feel. It's a little extreme, I know. But is it really? How many of you out there have, have end users that refuse to give up their spreadsheets? Right? They, just, they, they do all their work in their spreadsheets and then just copy it into Salesforce later. And I get it. Like, I, spreadsheets are fast. Like, working in Excel, you can do a lot at once, and it, it, you're very familiar with it. The accountant at our company, I was watching him work uh, in Excel, and it's like he's playing the piano. He's, he's just so fluid at it, and this, it was just getting, it was a hard uh, change for him to put things into Salesforce. And that's what you need to realize, that's what you're competing against. Imagine if every time you had to edit another row or another cell in Excel, it, every time you did that, you had to open up a new file. That's what it kind of feels like every time you're loading another page. So here's the use case that I was faced with. Um, Guild Education is, of course, an education benefits company, and we have admissions advisors. And they said they'd like to see the sources of their leads as they progress through the funnel in one place so they can plan out their calls and their day more efficiently. So what are the options that they have to, to do this? Well, there's list views, as you all know. They're easy to build, um, very editable, uh, editable in the sense that you can configure them quickly. And th there is some level of inline editing when you're using a list view. There are some fields that you can't edit in a list view, but you get a good bit. Uh, they're also available in Lightning components for most objects. Uh, I think tasks is one where you can't use a, a list view Lightning component. 
uh, but they're also limited to one level of data. And then also reports are, share a lot of the same characteristics, easy to build. Um, you also get multiple lines, levels of objects, so you can view parents and children. Uh, but they're not editable. And it turns out you can't actually embed them in Lightning components. You could put the chart in Lightning, but not the report itself. You can think of a report as a kind of a super list view. And then, of course, the other option is just build something. You know, um, a, a Visual Force slash Lightning component is really limited to what your developer can do, uh, to what we can do. I like to tell my, my stakeholders that with enough time and money, I can do anything stressing on with enough time and money. And when it comes to custom work, we can do whatever we want, but they're also expensive to maintain and deploy. When you, especially when you're low on resources, your developer becomes the bottleneck when you need, need changes, maintenance, when there's bugs, things like that. And my first instinct was like, yeah, I can just build, a, I'll just build a Lightning component, I'll just build a Visual Force page with a SQL query, it'll spit out the data you need, and then we'll just change the SQL query whenever you want to change the filter. But the reports were so close. If I could just put a report in a Lightning component on the home page, I'd be done. But, but I couldn't. And so I was torn between, it seems like there was something there, that I, I, it was 80% there, and I shouldn't just use something as heavy-handed as building out a custom feature. And so that triggered in my mind this idea of configuration-driven development. This is what I like to call when you walk the line between declarative and custom code in Salesforce. For example, Process Builder um, can fire Apex code. So instead of having a trigger and that, that does some business logic, you can use Process Builder as a sort of filter that fires some handler in Apex. And then if you need to change the filter criteria, you don't have to change any code. You can also leverage some pieces of the API that are very configurable. For example, field sets have been very useful for me when I build uh, visual force pages that need dynamic, um, uh, dynamic columns. A, a common theme I've seen before is I want to see all these contacts in a table all at once, but I'm not sure what, what, what columns to display. It's like, okay, well, I'll just build something generic that uses field sets so we can add them and subtract them as needed. There's also custom metadata types, which have recently replaced custom settings. These are great because they can act as sort of feature flags or um, filter criteria that you can hold in, in a sort of database, but because these are special objects, they don't, they don't have SQL limits, um, they persist between sandboxes, and they're very useful for, uh, for configuration. List views are very similar as well. Um, I just found out maybe a couple months ago that a list view, if you access it via the REST API, it actually spits out a SQL query. So, you know, we had dynamic pages that, um, you know, they, they can control the list views and display what they want, and all I have to do is handle the SQL query that gets fed in. And the thing I want to focus today on is the design attributes in Lightning Components. These design attributes allow for a lot more configuration on the front end. And what's nice about them is they're a little more one-off. They're not something as heavy as a custom metadata type where you have to figure out the schema. They're customizable specifically to each component that you make, and you can configure them on the fly as you add components to your app, apps in Lightning. The design attributes you'll see when uh, you create something in a Lightning application. Over here, the thing in the right, every time you click a Lightning component in an app builder, those are the design attributes. Over here you see it says report ID, and that's something that I configured in, in the design component in Lightning. Below is the code sample of how that works. So basically the label report ID is configured in an attribute and, the, and it pops up in the um, in app builder. And the nice thing about these is that they're accessible by JavaScript and Apex, allowing you to build dynamic functionality based on the inputs on these, on these uh, design attributes. So in this case, I use a report ID. You could also use field set names, uh, filter criteria, just anything, anything that you can put in a string and use that as a, a way to configure your components. So knowing all of this, Given all this information, I was like, okay, well, there's a reports API, and then, and then I can build a dynamic component that just takes 
a report ID and spits out the report in a page. And what's nice about this is it it's, doesn't care which report it's implementing. It just says, okay, you give me a report ID, I'll spit out a report. And, and because it's backed with data from the reports and dashboards API, I don't have to worry about the data inside of it. I don't have to worry about filter criteria or the columns I'm displaying. I just build generically and it handles the rest. So, so that being the case, I had, before I did that, I was like, I'd never use a reports and dashboards API. You know, I would always take the heavy handed waves, like why use a report when I can just write a SQL query? So I had to figure out what the reports and dashboards API actually spit out. Because you know, if you're going to build towards a configuration, you need to know your limitations. Build to the data that you're provided and understand what you can and cannot control. So I just, I went into execute anonymous in the developer console. I just um, did a system debug and sped out the JSON that comes from the reports API. And has anyone here seen it, used the, this API before? So you're familiar with the JSON. It's, it's a doozy. I, it's what I would say is less than ideal. It's not hierarchical in the sense it's like, okay, that's, if it's a summary report, so here's, a, here's a, a grouping with all its rows underneath it. It's actually very flat. So he, uh, here's some of the highlights. There's the, the header info, and here are the pieces that you should really focus on, at least for this uh, component we're building. The grouping column info is a summary of the, the grouping labels. So in this case, I grouped by company and lead source, and it, that, that's why those appeared there. Also, it starts at N, N being the level of groupings you're doing. So it's, not, it's in reverse order as well. Below that is the de detail column info. So these are the columns that get displayed in your report. Notice so far, there isn't, um, there isn't actual data in here. This is metadata about this report. The next level is the grouping info. This is not a, like a hierarchy beneath that header info. This is actually just another key in the JSON. So you have groupings. These are the, the values of the fields you grouped by. So in this case, that first one, well, we grouped by lead source, so that's why it says web. Then the next one below it is the company. And these, these are recursively nested objects. So there's a grouping, which has groupings, which has groupings. And when you have no more groupings, that's, that's when you know you've hit the bottom of the barrel. The other thing to notice here is this key. Uh, it's just this key to help you find that grouping and pair it with the rows that come, come with it. And you'll see that in the next slide. So just remember that key, zero underscore zero, that format is very important. So here you have the row info, and you have this thing called a fact map. This fact map contains the mapping of keys from the groupings that we saw on the last slide and the rows that it belongs to. So in this case, the screenshot says one underscore zero. There would have been a grouping that said one underscore zero. In fact, it doesn't even say one underscore zero here. It's one underscore zero bang T. I don't know why they appended that extra, extra bang T at the end, but it's there. And then, now that, you have, now that you've mapped your grouping with the fact map, now you have the actual row data. So here are the rows, and it shows all the values that belong uh, to that grouping. So that was less than ideal. I, uh, I encourage you to take a look at the JSON yourself. There's a lot more in there as well. And it's a lot of information, but I've come to accept that you, you work with what you're given. Just adapt. You, there's, um, I could have easily just said, okay, I give up. I'm just going to write a SQL query. That'll do it for me. But all that work is done for free. It, that's the, the beauty of Salesforce. You don't have to just, you know, don't just treat it as a database. Just treat it as a platform that you extend. And so knowing all this, this this, um, what I'm given by the API, now I need to plan our components. So outlined in red is the top layer component that I was going to build. This, this is the report container. This is gonna hold the report itself, and it, this one is going to be ch in charge of fetching the report data from the API, and then pass the information down to its child components. That report container will contain a report grouping. This will display each of those groupings from that summary report, inc including the header labels and those values. So it, it holds the rows as well, but not for information for the rows. And then the last 
com component is this grouping data cells. These are basically the rows that belong to each grouping. So this displays e the actual data for each record within each grouping, and it also grows dynamically based on the number of columns from the report. All right, let's jump into the demo. Take a look at some code. All right, can everyone see this all right? All right, all right. So the first thing I wanted to show was the Apex Apex uh, controller, which is not this. <laughs> Here you go. Here's the Apex controller, and it's so nice, it's one line. Okay, it's, well, it's six lines, technically, but they're mostly brackets. And all it does is it takes a report ID, it, it leverages that reports uh, API, which is what that reports, that report manager is, takes the report ID, takes, gets the JSON, and then we just, ser um, uh, I just serialize it into JSON so that I can send it to the front end to, to, to be handled by my uh, Lightning component. And of course, it's already enabled so that Lightning can access it. But this is great. Like all, it, just, it, it handles everything via the API. I didn't have to actually do any logic in here. And then this over here is the design component that I mentioned er earlier. This name is how you're going to reference it within the, the, the component, and this label is what's gonna appear on the front end. And this description helps you explain what it actually does. I'm not 100% sure if that displays on the front end, uh, but I believe it does. And so let's hop into the actual component. So here's the, mar the markup for the Lightning component um, HTML. You'll see here this report ID attribute. This attribute is linked to the design one and this allows me to um, use a merge field to refer to the report ID from that design component, which of course gets it, the ID itself from the front end from the app builder. And if you look at, uh, I don't wanna go too deep into this. Uh, if you, I, I will provide the code at the end. There's a GitHub link. and. A, so um, I encourage you to just take a look. But um, I commented each part to kind of explain the parts. Here's just a loading spinner to show you what's going on. Uh, here's some error handling, so if the report's not available, you see what's up. And here is the actual uh, meat of the project, is the report data. And this, you know, this displays the, the header, uh, it allows you to refresh the report. Um, and then here is the uh, here's the header for all the columns, so just display the columns for the report. And then this recursively um, iterates down the groupings to figure out if it should display another report grouping, or if there are no groupings at all, just display the grouping data cells, you know, in the case that you have a tabular report. And here's the, here's the controller itself. This get report function gets called on a net of the component. And, um, oh, this debugger shouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, here's just, uh, just displaying and hiding pieces of the report. Um, this is calling my controller action. So I grab the report ID from the attribute, pass it to the Apex controller, and that's how it spits out the JSON for the report. And here's the callback. So this callback gets called after um, the response is retrieved from, from the Apex controller. And th this is probably the meat of this component because you know, while we have all that free JSON, you know, it's not free in the sense that now you have to figure out how to parse that out into something usable by, for, the, uh, for the front end. And just to summarize, I'm just gonna go through the comments here. So just like categorize the groupings into levels so we can access them in our child components. Set the various lightning attributes that we need to access in the view. Set the column headers. And then hide the spinner and then reveal the data. And if anything else goes wrong, then just uh, remove, the the, uh, remove, the, um, remove the spinner and then show the error. And so we dive down into the report grouping. S similar idea, still very generic. Uh, just takes, uh, takes generic data from, that's passed in from the parent and uh, displays each of the groupings themselves. Uh, you'll notice that we don't actually 
display the rows yet because we want to separate the concerns of the groupings and the rows. You could have just mashed this all into one giant component, but then you lose some of the benefits of having component-based architecture. So here, this was just a quick way to display a link. So it's just a little hack here. If, uh, if, there, if the value of the grouping does not equal the label of the grouping, then we can assume that it's an ID. And if the, if the length is 15 or 18, then I'm just going to display link so that we can navigate to it. And then, or otherwise, just display the label. Uh, if there are more groupings, then recurse downwards into the next grouping. So this is a report grouping component, and it has a report grouping component inside of it. So it'll keep going down until there are no more groupings underneath. If there are no more groupings, then this then display the grouping data cells, which is the rows associated to that grouping. And the group, grouping data cells themselves, not nearly as interesting, uh, but again, just displaying the data that is passed in from the parent component. Uh, this over here was a, uh, a way to quickly add a link, but also to add edit access. Uh, with the lightning base components, I was able to use a lightning icon, and then the controller, uh, say, when you click the little pencil, uh, this edit, um, edit icon, it, then it shows a, a display uh, so that you can edit the record. So let's jump out of the code and take a look at the end product. A little baking magic. It's all done here. Everything, all my tests pass, and, and I throw it into production, and here it is. Uh, here's a lightning component with a report just embedded on the, on the home page. And now you can actually just work through your records. You can access the report itself if you needed to. Uh, we put the, the, the chart there so that you could also look at the chart if you need to. Um, you can navigate to the records. And this little pencil lets you edit the records right on the page. So not only are you uh, working, have, displaying your cue for the day, but you also have a way to edit the records right on the page. You never have to leave. There's no page load, no slap in the face. And so the real, the real magic here happens when you want to configure something. Let's say, you know what, I don't need just the phone. I need to be able to email them as well in case they don't have a phone number or the phone number is bad. Or it's just like, you know, I want to follow up with an email. So let's just add the email to this report. Save that. All right, let's run the report to make sure we're good. So the email is there. We navigate back to our home page, and I click refresh here, and voila, there's our email. Notice I didn't even have to refresh the page. I refreshed the report itself and the component because it's just fetching new JSON data from the report. And the beauty of that is, is if someone wanted to configure that, they didn't have to call me. They just fixed the report, and they can add and subtract fields as they, as they desire. The one thing I do want to um, highlight here is I added another report and just threw in a bogus report ID uh, in, the, in the app builder. And that's what, it's, that's what I had it spit out. If like, it can't find a report uh, or you don't have access to it, it just marks it as unavailable. And please notify your system administrator to see what's up. And so the one caveat here is that because this is just a report that it's pulling from, you have to be very careful as to who has access to edit that report because not only would that person be editing it for themselves, but everyone at the company that's also looking at that page. Or if they, if they hide the report, if they delete the report, all of a sudden you're gonna get a lot of people notifying you that their report is broken and that you need to fix it right now. So let's recap. Number one, don't code if you don't have to. I mean, I love coding. I would just code all day if I, if I could. But you're, you're doing a disservice to yourself and, and to your company. Uh, if you can do something out of the box, do that. If you can buy something, um, just maybe it's, it's worth it to buy. Uh, even something, sometimes I'm like, well, I could totally just build this in a week. And then it turns out the licenses cost like $2,000 a year. And it's like, is the time to spec this out, build it, and uh, get it delivered, and also the time to get it delivered worth 
more, uh, worth less than $2,000? Probably not. So you just, you just buy if you can. And if you have to buy, I mean, if you have to build, then build with a configurable mindset. Build in a way that it can be maintained and changed by a, uh, a non-developer. You know, like uh, your admin could be the one that's changing the reports and adding new reports to your, to your homepage. And then as a result, you as a developer, you're not, you're not maintaining anymore. If you touch that code again, it's probably either to fix a bug or to enhance it. Uh, what else could you do with this? You could hook it up to Lightning Data Service and have it uh, more editable. So you can actually edit the entire thing within line. Uh, what if you just took it to its logical, crazy conclusion and instead of writing SQL queries, you only use reports. So everything that uses a SQL query in your Apex code actually just worked off the, the logic of a report. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little crazy, but the tools are there and it's a lot of flexibility. Uh, same thing with those list views that I mentioned earlier. Like, part of me is like, oh, maybe I shouldn't use um, uh, a SQL query anymore because I can just have something that's dynamic and configurable. And then when you're building, make sure you break your solutions down into modular parts. Uh, when, you, when you have modular parts, that means you can uh, pick and choose which parts you have and, and change your functionality without breaking things. Those components that we showed earlier, the container, the grouping, and the, the data cells, there were three different components, but they didn't really know about each other. They contained each other and followed a contract and followed a relationship that, okay, if you use me, you have to pass, pass this kind of data to me. But as a result, if I didn't like the way that the data cells worked for this reporting component, I could make another component and just switch them out without having to touch the other ones. That'll be especially useful when paired with something like the new lightning testing framework. So you can test small parts instead of, as opposed to testing one giant thing. And so here's a few resources here uh, with all the code today. So you can go to GitHub. Um, that repository is the code for that uh, reporting component. Uh, you can also go to that link, which is the unmanaged package inst installation link. I realize now that I put a shot, probably should, put a, should have put the link itself up there instead of the slides. You know what, I'm gonna do that right now so that you can actually see the link because I say that I'm gonna put it on chatter, but who knows. There you go, right behind Astro. You have to figure out the ID. All right, everyone take your pictures real quick. <laughs> go ahead and get that link so you can install it in your org today. Uh, it's, un it's unmanaged as well, so if you install it, you have access to all the code, so uh, you or the developers you work with can you know, change it to your liking and do whatever you want. Um, and also the other links I provided here are the Lightning Design System, um, which did a lot of design work for me. I'm not a designer. If it were up to me, we would just be passing JSON objects to each other. Like, who needs pictures? <laughs> who needs UI? I can read. Uh, <laughs> And then also the, a link to the reports and dashboards API. It's a doozy. It's like one of the hardest JSON uh, structures I've had. No, maybe that's a lie. It's, it's, but it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to take in, and going through that API will help you a lot. And lastly, of course, here are some trailhead models that, uh, modules that I think will be very useful. Uh, these are the three that I did before uh, doing any Lightning uh, component building. So the Lightning App Builder, just to get a feel for what it's like on the front end, the Lightning Design System, so that I, I can leverage all of the styles of, of Lightning without having to roll my own, and also Lightning Component Basics, just to give you uh, an idea of how to uh, build a Lightning component. And of course, you can always contact me. Uh, you can visit my blog at socalledprogrammer.com, and also you can follow me on Twitter at um, twitter.com slash squizzleflip. Don't ask. <laughs> And uh, I, don't, I don't tweet very often, but if I had more followers, maybe I would. So, <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. I'll open up for questions now. Uh, I, I guess uh, if you have a question, go to the microphone so everyone could hear. I think it's also being recorded. Yeah, great presentation. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, I, 
I thought I, I had the same idea. I thought it was an original idea, but I never executed on it, so kudos to uh, executing on it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, did, did you look at the uh, Lightning data table and utilizing that? I didn't. That, that seemed like, um, uh, this, that was like my first Lightning component. Uh, so like there was a lot of the base lightning components that uh, I probably should have leveraged. It probably would have made it look a lot nicer because it's just like random paddings everywhere. And I, I think they do groupings now. Oh, on do the, they? On the data table. Nice, uh, yeah. And I forget if it was winter, winter 18 or coming because I was just talking to those guys. Cool, but yeah. But they, they are doing groupings now within the table. That's awesome. I so, should take a look. Yeah, if you notice, that report actually looks more like a classic report than a lightning report, where they do the grouping more horizontally. But yeah, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, oh. Are all, um, are all components um, plat platform specific, either standard or lightning? Or do they, or some of them, you know, can handle both platforms? Uh, well, you can, do you mean between Classic and Lightning? Um, there's a thing called Lightning Out. I haven't actually tried it yet, but it's a way to put Lightning components in a Visual Force page. Um, that's probably your best bet. Uh, I, I still do build Visual Force pages, but we're finally getting to the point where Lightning does make sense. It's, it, the features are there, and then, the support is strong, so like try to build in Lightning and make it backwards compatible by using something like Lightning Out as opposed to going the other way. Um, will it actually work on any report, or are there some limitations to your reports? I, I haven't tried it on a joined report. I actually can't, I don't know how to build a joined report in Salesforce. <laughs> so, but I do know that it works on tabular reports, on any number of levels for a summary report. Uh, a matrix report wouldn't work because it's just it's a completely different layout. Yeah, it comes down to the JSON, basically. Right. And, and handling the JSON. And the easiest way to, to look at the JSON is to use the workbench. Oh, yeah. So can you extend the reporting API more than you can do with what the reports are, like cross object? editing, going, adding more and more? Or can you just do two? Yeah, I mean, like, you, at that point, you could pretty much do anything. Something I thought about was, um, you know, when you have complex joins, you could just run two reports, and then you have the JSON, you can just join them yourself. And now you have, like, a, you know, now you have a, a configurable joined report that makes sense. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, everyone. I'll be here for a few more minutes if you want to hang out, but thanks again.